Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We'll be covering the process of cash book batch processing within Sage Trend Evolution. Now, there are a couple of options that you can make use of when it comes to processing transaction in the cash book, and we're covering those options today. Before you can process in transactions, we can look at a couple of parameters, and these include our cash book defaults. So under general ledger, I'm going to go to my defaults. And we have a section there for cash book batches. Now, we are able to specify automatic numbering for your cash book batches, as well as specifying a prefix for those cash book batch numbers. The same process would apply for your batch referencing number. Once again, automatic incrementing, as well as specifying a prefix. We also need to specify the default line text options when processing cash book batch, as well as the different transaction codes for your cash payments, customer and supply discount codes, etc. Right, so we need to then move on to our cash book integration. So this really is details about the defaults when you process in cash book batch, which bank accounts applicable, the applicable customer as well as the customer. Uh, uh, supplier control accounts, and those defaults can be specified under the cash book integration section. Right, now we can go on and open up a cash book batch. So I'm going to move on to my general ledger transactions and cash book batches. Right, so general ledger transactions and I've got my cash book batches. Open up a new batch. And what you'll notice, we've got our cash book batch number, specify description there, and a couple of options in regards to clearing batch after post, etc. If we then go over to our integration, we can specify once again the bank account number to be applicable for the cash book batch, as well as the receivables and the payables control accounts. If you are going to be processing customer payments or supplier transactions and there's discount applicable, you can obviously just enable these options in order for you to process those particular settlement discounts for the customer or supplier transactions. And then also just the new line defaults with the date transactions, the module, etc references and descriptions. I'm just going to use the automatic incrementing of descriptions as well as references. And then also details about the tax defaults and also the batch defaults. We've got our batch number, the description, as well as the agent who created this particular batch. Right, once those options have been specified, we can then move on to the batch and begin processing transactions. So, We've got our date option there, and there's really three options in regards to GL postings, postings to suppliers, as well as customers. So firstly, if you go to GL, we can, for example, do a deposit or a payment. So I'm going to say, for example, um, a payment and insert my reference. In this particular instance, it's going to be a payment insert my payment amount. The other option would be to make use of a deposit. So I need to specify a specific account. And the deposit value. Now what you notice is that the reference numbers are incrementing based on the settings I specified when the batch was created. So under my view, my batch properties, I then set the new line defaults and to increment the references as well as the descriptions. All right, so those really are the two options when it comes to payments and deposits. The other option would be is that if you're processing, for example, a supplier transaction, the module then would be your AR module, and then I would then need to specify the relevant customer applicable for this transaction. And the deposit value, 
which is a receipt from the customer. And then I could then move on and process a payment or supplier transaction. So in this case, I'm going to use the AP module and specify the relevant supplier. Right, so you can then, as I mentioned, have a payment amount, a deposit, a customer transaction, or a supplier transaction. I'm just going to go and verify the batch. All appears to be in order. There's just a warning about the supplier terms being over or over the account to the supplier. However, we can still go update and process the batch. I do got our deposit values and, and a deposit total and our payment totals. And now I can go and post the batch. Save my changes. And I'm going to complete the batch posting. At this point, I can go print the cash book batch. And I've got a couple of sort options there which are available. If I preview, we've got details about the module, in this case, supplier transaction, the customer transaction, the relevant GL transactions, and the values for those transactions. And there we have our cash book batch number. And at this point, I can then go post the batch, general ledger. Once I post the batch, I now have the opportunity to go and allocate customer transactions. So I'm going to say yes to that. The allocation screen then opens, and I can simply go do allocation from the customer receipt to the relevant invoice, which is applicable. So I'm going to highlight the credit transaction being the receipt, and then link that to the invoice by using the drag and drop feature. So I'm going to drag and drop the receipt and link it to the particular invoice. Specify my allocation amount, and I can close and save that option. Okay, you notice is that I have the ability to unallocate. So perhaps if I've allocated the receipt to the incorrect invoice, I can simply unallocate the item and then reallocate it to the correct transaction. Close the allocation screen, and I can allocate the supplier transaction as well. So I'm going to say yes to that allocation. And we've got our details there. I'm now simply going to once again allocate the payment made to the supplier to the supplier invoice, drag and drop, specify my allocation amount, and say OK. Save the allocation and close. Right, so our cash book batch has now been updated, which contained um, a payment, a deposit, as well as the customer and a pay and a supplier transaction. Next option we have is the ability to export and import cash book batches. So once again, I'm going to open up a new batch. And under my new line, I'm just going to increment the references and the descriptions. And once again, ensure that the integration is correct. Going to create bank account, the correct AR and AP account. Right, so I'm going to say OK to that, and we can access the cash book badge. Now, the whole idea here is really to create a template, which we can then use to import transactions at a later stage. The easiest would simply be to create a one-line transaction. So I'm going to say, for example, And in a certain amount payment. And I just need to create the one line. So at this point in time, I'm going to create the template. So I can simply go to validate, all is in order there. And I'm just going to go to batch. And I can now use the export option to go. 
save those changes. And I can now specify an export location. And what you notice is that the batch is going to be exported in .csv format. And always a good idea or best practice to export the header record so you know exactly the header information and what information is implemented or captured in a particular column when importing. Specify field delimiter as well as a Windows date or the date format to be used when the export has been done. Right, so I can now say OK there. I've specified my export location. And in this case, no errors were found during the export. However, I can go view the log file. And if I expand the log, it'll tell me there is my destination folder where the export was done to, the number of records exported, and there were no errors during the export. Right, so now I can simply go say batch, clear the batch, and we can then say save and close. So this particular point in time, you would then, you've now exported the template, you have the layout required to the import, and you would simply then go and capture the information to be used on the import file in your CSV. Right, I'm just going to go back into our cache book batch, and we can now import the information. So open the batch, I'm then going to go to batch, import, I'm going to go browse, the file right and there we go there's our cache book batch or the, or the file that I'm intending to import in the CSV format open got my details there and if I say okay no errors and what you see there is we've now been able to import that information from a CSV file into our cache book batch Right, once again, I can just validate, no errors, and batch has been imported from our CSV file, and I can simply say post the print the batch file if needed. There's my details, close, and post the batch, update the general ledger. So that's a process of the export importing of cache book batches. It's a case of creating a one line batch, exporting the format into a CSV file, populating the CSV file, and then using that CSV file in order to import into a new cache book batch or the existing batch. The other option we have is the ability to use the split line option. So I'm going to open up a new cache book batch. And if I go to my details to increment the description, the reference. And what you notice is what a split line option available. So I'm just going to specify an account. And I'm going to use a split line feature. And at this particular time, I can then go and split a certain amount by different accounts. I'm going to say, for example, a certain amount there. Have another split line that's making up a total value. And there we go. And if I then validate, just add a reference. And you'll see that we've got now 1,000 payment, which has been made up by the three lines. 
500, the 300, and the 200. So we can now make use of the split line option where we can split one value amongst various GL accounts. And let's just, for example, insert description. Validate. And the batch has been successfully validated. We've then got our payment value, which has been split into those three line items. I can now say post the batch. Save my changes. If I print the batch file, you see that we've got the split being mentioned with our reference. We've got the details, our value, and how that value has been split into those three different accounts. Close. And I can post the batch. And the batch has been posted. So really, as you can see, a couple of options available with cash book processing, processing of deposits, processing of payments to GL accounts, the ability to process customer receipts and allocate those receipts to relevant invoices, the ability to process payments to suppliers and do the allocations, the ability to export a batch and then import that batch into a new cash book, as well as the ability to use the split line option if you want to create one amount and split that amount over different gel accounts. Thank you for tuning in. It's over and out for me and goodbye.